What is up and is going on guys, Simpsy here and welcome back to my QPR career mode. Now this episode is going to be very controversial, you're either going to like it or you're going to hate it. So guys, the first piece of transfer negotiations is we had a 40 million bid from a Delta route, which is absolutely ridiculous. And I did counter for 60 million and uh, um, my centre-back uh, offer was rejected by Bordeaux, but Barcelona are going to buy a Delta Rat for 60 million. I did do a counter with Borussia Dortmund in the last episode for the 50, but that is a ridiculous amount of money for a Delta Rat. But just imagine what we can do with the squad with the money. He is a fantastic player, but he's I don't think he's worth 60 million. We did get allocated 51, so that is just mental. Now, what I do with the money is going to be very interesting. Like I said, you're either going to like it or you're going to hate it. Because we have so much transfer negotiations in this episode, we only have one match, and that match is against Millwall. It's a home match. But Charlie Austin, we did get an offer for him to go to um, Aston Villa on loan, which I'm quite in, in. I'm quite happy to do. Now, um, we did get an offer here for Danny Warbeck to go to PSG. $35 million, I thought. We did pay... How much did we pay for him again? We paid... 13 million from Manchester United. So, if you guys remember in the last episode, I did shortlist a shit ton of players. Now, I thought I could go out and buy one player. We have enough money to sign like Robert Lewandowski, Suarez, or Marco Royce. But what what is the smart thing to do with 60 million? You don't buy one player, you buy as many as you can on these shortlists. So, we have signed Aga, we have signed Gomez, Kabul. I know this might put in jeopardy our FA Cup run in this season, but if we want to stay contenders for the third season in the Barclays Premier League, if we make it, we're going to need squad depth. And if we want to make Champions League further on, we're going to try sign as many players. And I think this is worth it. Bakary Sanya, we've got Menez coming in. We've got Sebastian Rode, who's going to be a fantastic player, I think, uh, 23 years of age. Um, so... Yeah, like I said, you're either going to like it, you're going to hate it, you're going to hate it. But um, if we don't make the Barclays Premier League next season, um, we're going to have to loan out all these players because we haven't got enough money. But we did have a simulation match against Bournemouth. So this is the only team that seemed to beat us. But in a simulation at home, we win 6-1. It doesn't make fucking sense. But the main man I really wanted in this... Uh, transfer was uh, Diego. Uh, we don't quite have the funds at the moment, so we're just going to have to change it around in the negotiations. But we've got Menes. We've got we've got so many players, and this is not including the money we get in the Barclays Premier League next season. So I know some of you might have wanted me to actually buy players for this season, but just think, next season we're going to have. So many free players, it's going to be ridiculous. And if I had the option to say, I don't know specifically how many players we have, I would say we've probably got six or seven. If you if you would swap Tarat for seven players next season, I would do that in a heartbeat. And just remember, guys, it is in free. It's entirely free. Last but not least, Diouf. We're going to try to sign 26-year-old striker. So we really do need the squad depth, and I think that's a very, very smart move to bring in all these free players. But once again, guys, if we don't want them and they, they have ship potentials, we can sell them. We can sell them next year and make a profit. So I, I guess it's it's very up in the air because obviously some players can lose their stats over the, the remaining half of the season. But I think that's a smart route, a smart move to do with the Delta Rat. I'm very disappointed that we don't have Tarat because he was a fantastic player. He played so well with... Um, with Danny Welbeck and uh, Remy up front. But uh, we're going to be replacing him with Krenja. But uh, we've got Duth, you got Diego. Diego's going to be a fantastic player. 83 overall, he's going to replace him. But we do have... Um, I kind of I kind of <laughs> went ham signing all these free agents. And I realised that uh, we have a lot of players actually expiring their contract. So it's going to be interesting to see how many of these players we're going to be bringing back. Because uh, Green is pretty much my only striker. So I thought, out of those players, who do I want to keep? And it's definitely Troy. Him and Junior Hoyler up front this season have been absolutely fantastic on the wings. And uh, I really wanted to bring him back. Wright Phillips is 32 years of age and Umbia is 27. So if I was going to sign anyone back, it would probably be Troy Ore. Uh, Tom Hitchcock, uh, he's only 60 overall and he's I think he's 21. He's turning 22. So I think he might be past it on the youth side. We, we might try to loan him out a little bit more, but... Uh, We'll see how it goes. We did actually offer him another contract because 
I want to make try. I want to try and make as much money off him as possible. But we do have the January transfer deadline day in this episode. But Torreira comes back and he's actually rejected his contract, so we're going to have to offer him another one. Usually when that happens, you're going to have to offer him another one, try for him a little bit more money. But just to think, we've got Menez coming in next season, so it should be fine. And also, we can always bring uh, Tarat back. We can always uh, try to get him from Barcelona. Maybe he might flunk at Barcelona. I know this is a perfect example. When I did play my Manchester United career mode, I did sign Marco Royce from Borussia Dortmund for around about the 50 million, 60 million sort of mark. I did sell him on to Barcelona for a season for 120 million, and then I ended up bringing him back for 60 million. So I made I made nearly an 80 to a 70 million. I, I'm just saying it roughly because I don't, can't remember exactly. But um, we made like an 80 to 70 million profit, which was absolutely ridiculous and because of that money we'll be able, we were able to sign uh, Gareth Bale but um, I do apologize if you would have liked to actually see more players in this season but just think we're gonna have so many fantastic players in the next so Dumbia actually signed for Bayern Leverkusen and Adrian went to Valencia which I think is a very very interesting move um, I don't know why you would go from Atletico Madrid to a lower Team because Atletico Madrid are playing fantastic in this career mode and in real life as always. But Cranjo, we did get an offer from Newcastle. I don't really want to sell him unless we get a massive buyout clause from him because we haven't really got uh, a very main man center attacking mid at the moment because we did sell fucking Tarat for 60 million to Bars. <laughs> but um, it's good to see that he's not actually gone to a, a Premier League team or an English team to be rivaled. But uh, Sergio Aguero. He's actually gone to Real Madrid for just under 90 million, 89 million, which is fantastic. Uh, we did manage to loan out a couple of players as well. Zaboleta has gone to Napoli for 15 million. It looks like Wayne Rooney could be going to Borussia Dortmund. Mind you, they did have a lot of money. They did offer me 40 million, so they could be trying to bring something in. But Javi Martinez actually signed for Manchester City, which is interesting. Maybe he's going to be replacing Yaya Toure once he retires. But um, the deadline day has ended, and just to end it on that, we're going to be going through the squad report. So this guy, Alec Kent, is it Kent Wolves? I can't remember how you, I can't remember how you spell it. I didn't really pronounce it, sorry. But we're quickly just going to go through the squad report here. Danny Wall, uh, Danny Simpson, sorry. Probably really going to have to replace that right back. Um, Young's gone up a plus three, which is interesting. Troy's gone up a plus two. But we do have a match in this episode, guys. We've finished the transfer negotiations, so... Like I said, I, I really do apologize if you didn't want me to do it, but I think that's the smartest move, having all those players in the next season. But uh, we do in January. we still got the remaining half. I know spending that $60 million now, we basically set up our next season. I know that sort of put our FA Cup run in jeopardy for this season because we did get knocked out of the Capital One, <laughs> the Capital One Cup. But if we can have the squad depth and the amount of players next season, because we're not going to be, we're going to try push for Champions League. We're going to try get it. We're going to try get Champions League. I don't know where we're going to end up in the table, to be quite honest. I'll be happy with European football, um, but that's probably my main target, depending on if depending on what the board wants, to be quite honest. But just have a think about it. The people in the top four are going to be... Um, from, this is the Barclays Premier League. The people in the top four are going to be playing European football. So we're not going to be playing European football. And if we've got this amount of squad depth... Um, I think we'll do exceptionally well. Just Dior, we got bloody Dior, Danny Welbeck, Remy, and Gomez up front, which is absolutely fantastic, and we can rotate them a lot. So, yeah. So let's hopefully uh, see how we go. But we do have a match against Millwall, which we we versed them actually quite recently. We versed them back to back. Um, but Cranger there hits off the post, so he's he's trying to um, make him make himself his own Tarat. So he's an all right cam. He's seventy six overall. He's kind of old. But uh, we're coming to the final end of the season. We really did step up. Um, we did have like a, a really good brace at the start. Nearly cementing our league. Cranger trying to have a, a wayward shot. So he's actually not uh, not too bad of a cam. I can see why Newcastle were trying to hunt for him. But I do feel bad now that Adele Tarat didn't get to finish the season. But I think $60 million is uh, <laughs> is a lot of money. And uh, even though he would have been a fantastic player, we can always try and sign him back. Um, but he was worth 18. Barca wanted 60. I Like, Borussia Dortmund wanted him for 50 and they rejected it. But 60 million is absolutely fucking ridiculous. <laughs> but just imagine all the players we've got now. Diego, Gomez. We've just, I can't wait for next season. And uh, to finish this one up. But, uh, yeah. A nice goal there from Danny Welbeck climbing from the header from Junior Hoylet. So we're currently winning 3-0 
over Millwall. And last time we versed Millwall, it was fucking Luke D. Uh, it was fucking Luke's. Um, not Luke. Um, Young, the the Korean, didn't manage to ch uh, trip up Green. But we do have another penalty here. Remy's going to try step up. And uh, I did actually give Danny Welbeck the free kick, cause he, uh, the penalty, because he's actually a better penalty kick taker. We went straight down the middle, but unfortunately, it does get saved. So, actually, let me know your thoughts and opinions whether or not I should have signed one big player. Like, I could have signed Royce, even though it was probably going to be pretty hard to sign Royce, Robin Desco, or Suarez, just simply because we're in the championship. We're in a lower league. Uh, than the one they're currently in, so it would probably be harder. We probably would have had to pay a lot more money, but I think that was the best way to do so, and we signed a lot of pre-contracts, and we can always sell them on to make the profit back. But we're currently dominating Millwall here. Remy's trying to pick up another goal. A nice left foot to right foot coming back in. He really did finesse that, but 5-0 over Millwall after that transfer going through. Just, just It must have been the competence of just saying, wow, look who we're going to be playing with next year. We're going to be playing with Diego. A fantastic cam from uh, Atletico Madrid. He, he is such a good player, um, Diego. So I really can't be, I can't wait to play with him. And he's really going to be replacing Tarat in that cam role. And uh, we're going to have Gomez. And we've got Aga. We've got Aga, a solid center back as well. He's going to be playing with his... He's um, he's Denmark mate Sorensen, of course. So we have Bakary Sanya. So I really can't wait uh, for next season. It's going to be a blast. We've got a lot of uh, players to look forward to. But Luke, uh, our Korean, Yun Suk Young. Yun Suk Young, yeah, that's it. Unfortunately, picked up a four month injury. A four month injury, which was absolutely ridiculous. But luckily, we do have a Sui Koto. Um, on the bench as a left back from Tottenham Hotspur, so we can rotate him into the squad. But we're coming to the uh, we're coming to the end of this episode, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you watched all the way through, I really do appreciate it. Make sure to leave a like on this video to support my channel, and I do apologise if you don't like me signing all those free agents and want to see another big player. But uh, hey, what are you going to do? You can't make everyone happy. I really do. I really do feel bad about it. But um, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.